you're, 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 you're listening to the podcast for all of the news, notes, and breakdowns for your Ohio State Buckeyes. This is Sons of the Shoe with Nick Wilson and Spencer German. Sons of the Shoe is back. Ohio State still practicing down yonder in Columbus as spring practices are running rampant. We will get into the latest from spring practice. We will get into the latest potentially from the portal, what it could mean for Ohio State. And uh, a fond farewell has sure turned real sour real quick in Columbus as well. But uh, as we are a relatively new podcast, please make sure to follow Sons of the Shoe wherever you get your podcasts. Apple, Spotify, uh, 92.3 The Fan, the free Odyssey app, Apple, Follow the show. We appreciate it, but uh, you guys help us stay on the air here. Now I'm sounding like we're some sort of uh, like 24-hour drive. Only you can save Nick and Spencer's careers. Uh, Also, don't forget to follow us on 92.3 The Fans uh, YouTube channel and uh, make sure to leave your comments here on today's episode as well. We greatly appreciate it. But, Spencer, how you doing? Doing well, getting over a cold because the weather just won't ever stay the same. Uh, but it's that time of year. So uh, it's also the time of year, I guess, to worry about people potentially leaving Ohio State because there's all kinds of rumors. Um, so I'm, I'm interested to see what your panic level is at. A, a non-Michigan panic meter level. You just, you know, it's funny. I think you just want me to panic. I think you like it when I panic. <laughs> because I like I to thought, watch you squirm. I've, I've jammed you up so many times about you panicking that it makes you feel safe. Like, you know, like when, when, uh, when like you're in a chaos situation and you look over and somebody's like hyper calm and it calms you down, that's you, but with panic. Like you want me to keep looking over at you and panic to the same degree that you panic on damn near everything. Well, you like you like reassurance on those types of things. We also because obviously you were you you missed the very tail end of of our, our episode earlier in the week. Oh, I heard we didn't get your yeah. we didn't get your panic meter reaction. Um, so I'm care with the with the Tony Alford stuff. So there's a lot of different things that we could be panicking about today. We'll see. Yeah, I, I I'm dangerously close to to grabbing my crotch and say I got your panic meter right here. That's <laughs> that's what I think about you changing your level of panic on the friggin' Michigan panic meter because a friggin' running backs coach went to friggin' Michigan. Now, um, obviously this week has been really interesting. There's a lot of interesting quotes coming out of Columbus, but. Uh, two of the more noteworthy things, the uh, the quarterback competition rages on, which we'll get to in a moment, but Jeremiah Smith now becomes the fastest Buckeye to have his black stripe removed uh, for practices. And now the previously old record was set uh, last year by Carnell Tate, who had his black stripe removed in five practices. So I'll ask you, uh, does this impact your hype on Jeremiah Smith? Uh, I mean, I just feel like, you know, they've they've softened the requirements these days. They're, they they don't make them like they, you know, it used to be a lot harder to, to earn to get your black stripe taken off. Now they're just going soft on people because they don't want to lose anybody in the transfer portal and make them feel like they're not. No, I'm, kid- I'm totally kidding. I'm totally kidding. Here's uh, the funny I, thing is I actually agree with you. Like I do. I absolutely do think. Wait, like, really? Yes. Yes, I don't think it's just because of the portal, but like I think, I think you used to have to like it was pretty common practice that you didn't earn your black stripe till leading up to the season, and the idea that it happens pretty much for for multiple guys um, in spring practice, it's a little, it takes some of the special out of it. It doesn't really mean anything anymore. It's more I, of like you know, it's more of a hair tussling instead of a firm handshake and a job well done. Well, I'd like to know, like I I don't know what the requirements are. And, and it's 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 got to be different based off like the position, right? Like, is there something you have to do to earn it that they like have like requirements for? Or is it just like an arbitrary like, well, he looks like he's he's done a good job? Because if it is the latter, then I guess the the tongue in cheek reference that I'm saying, the, the tongue in cheek joke I'm making, maybe is true. Where they're just like, yeah, this guy's kind of a freak, and he's 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 done really well so far. So, eh. Let's just say he he earned his black stripe earlier than or lost his black stripe faster than anybody has ever lost their black stripe. So I, I don't know, like that that's the big secret, right? Is what actually goes into is there like a rubric that they have printed out, like, well, a wide receiver loses his black stripe if he does all these things, or if he's just Jeremiah Smith. Uh a lineman loses his black stripe if he does all these things, or is it just like 
when we decide you lose your black stripe, you lose your black stripe. So I'm going to go ahead and say it's a, the equivalent of the eye test, right? It's like, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> coaches love the eye test. And here's the thing. I'm going to go ahead and say with respect the uh, that Ryan Day, who seems like a guy who really knows how to uh, work the system, and I mean that in a good way. It's not a shot at him. I would imagine he uses it differently than maybe Trestle used it. Like, right? Like, I feel like Trestle was like, all right, the black stripe comes off. It means you're finally a Buckeye. You're not a Buckeye till we do that. And that there's a reward system there. I I think there's a little bit of clout when, when Ryan Day does it. And it does, like... I don't love it as much. I mean, listen, I'm not doubting that Jeremiah Smith is, is is has earned or will have earned it. I think we all expect him to be a freak. But there's a part of me that's like, eh, this feels a little, a little hair tussly. Yeah. I don't really like hair tussly. I, and it's funny, like, it's not a generational thing because a lot of people in my generation did like hair tussles. Like, ah, you got it, slugger. Here's your this or that, the other. I just... I, I don't do well with compliments. I think you might have even noticed that. Like, I'm really bad at getting compliments. I don't like, I'm not like, oh, thank you. This, like, I know, I'm like, uh, please don't say nice things about me. I don't trust them. <laughs> um, and that's just because of decades of abuse from my own family. But like, um, my mom's family should be very, they're Hungarian. There's, there's, you never, never can do nice things. Like, uh, hey, I heard you came home to, to Cleveland. Yeah. Well, don't screw that up. That's that's like the welcome home I got is man. It's so great to have you. I don't think you're gonna see me. Good luck. <laughs> like, you know, that's that's a tough position to take over, and uh, you're kind of a dipshit. So I don't know if this is gonna work out, but we're happy you're home. Like that's the kind of thing I'm used to, and I'm like, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> um. So no, I mean, I now what I will say is. I think this sets a certain expectation for Jeremiah Smith, which is funny because, you know, Carnell Tate popped a lot last year. Yeah. I think Carnell Tate had a better quarterback. I think we would be raving about and frothing at the mouth Probably. this year. So I think, I think I you know, I, there was one wide receiver not held back um, by, by Kyle McCord last year was Marvin Harrison Jr. Cade Stover had a couple moments. G. Scott had a few moments. Um, Carnell had a few moments. Emeka Buka had a few moments. But by and large, like that to me shows the greatness of Marvin Harrison. So now the fact that I think no matter who the quarterback is, that one of these guys will be able to do something significant with these wide receivers, I I think it's okay to start like yeah. hyping yourself up for uh, for for Jeremiah Smith. Yeah, I do, and, I, and you know, I joke about a rubric. I do, I do think. Ryan Day probably uses it, like you said, kind of as like a, a just like an, an awards, like almost like an award type thing or a recognition that, yeah, this player's here. He's really, really good. He's he's earned his stripe already coming off. Um, and somebody like Jeremiah Smith, who, let's face it, you're going to be constantly playing this game with where you're trying to keep him happy and make sure he's he's here and he wants to be here and all these different things. Like I, I think he, you know, you, you look at it and it probably is more of an arbitrary thing than, than, you know, the, the jokes about rubrics and what actually requires you to lose it or whatever. So I, I think that's probably true. I think, I think he's probably playing that game with a lot of different guys and, and really everybody on the team and just kind of saying like, well, Hey, uh, you, you earned it because you're trying to kind of smooth things over and keep them happy and let them know like they matter and that they're they're a Buckeye and all these different things. So, but I also think I don't, I, I, to be honest, if that is what it is, and if there's, I guess, older heads out there that are gonna, you know, make fun of that and be like, oh, they're just soft nowadays and it's, it's a lot easier to earn things. And back in my day, we had to walk uphill 15 miles in the snow to, earn, to get our black stripe taken off. Um, then I, I think like it, 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 I think it's, it's, I think it just speaks to the times, not, mm -hmm. not, and not in the way that you're thinking. Like, I, I think it speaks to the evolution of college football where you can't just go out and be like, well, you have to earn everything because no, like you, that's how like in the recruiting system we have now with the NIL and everything involved in it, you have to constantly basically be, I don't want to say pampering. I don't know if that's the right word, but you do have to kind of be catering to certain players at all times because you know that in a moment's notice they could say, 
well, hey, I'm going to go jump in the transfer portal and I'm out of here. I mean, look at the Caden Proctor situation this week, which I know we're going to talk about. Like, you want to make sure that those you're keeping those star players especially happy because they're so important to your program and they're so important to your success as a head coach and as a program. So, um, yeah, I, I, I can't really blame him if that's the way he is using it, and I think it's great. I do think, too, though, on some level it does speak to – um, it, it does speak to Jeremiah Smith being just an absolute freak. Um, I mean, that, and, and that's what people were saying about him coming in. Uh, who was it that said, was it Denzel Burke who had the quotes about, you know, I, I, you know, going up against Marv was, was hard enough and going up against Carnell Tate was hard enough, but now I'm going up against Jeremiah Smith and, and that dude's like the real freaking deal. So, um, I, I think, I think everybody within the program probably feels like it was warranted for him to lose his as quickly as he did because, he just seems like he's going to be an absolute stud of a player. And I do think, you know, we had the conversation earlier in the offseason about what kind of impact he's going to have in year one. I think I, I, I am I am banking on the fact that he probably has a larger impact than even like Carnell Tate did last year as a as a true freshman with the Buckeyes. Because I just I he he see like Jeremiah Smith strikes me as the kind of kid that they're not they're gonna have a tough time like redshirting and only letting play, I think what is it, six games. Um, so we'll, we'll see, but I do think he's going to be like a, a player that gets on the field quite a bit and that they're utilizing each and every single week. Cause he's, he's that damn good. I think you're flip-flopping. I think when we talked about Jeremiah Smith back in December, I vaguely remember you saying, well, he's a freshman. Let's not go too crazy here. Am I wrong? And I was the one saying, no, that's the whole point of having a Jeremiah Smith. I think the point is to have high expectations. Are you flip-flopping on your Jeremiah Smith take now four months into the Jeremiah Smith experience in Columbus? I think presented with new information, yes. <laughs> no, no, there's not, no, there's not really new information. Yeah, there's no, no information. Well, That's a good point. Thank well, you for owning that. Well, no. I um, what, So here, here's the thing. I think – I do think that there is an element to Ohio State. I, I've talked about this a bunch of times. I talked about it uh, earlier in the week on an earlier episode. I think that there's an element to Ohio State where players come in understanding, like they might not start their freshman year and they might just kind of be like a role player and then they develop into that guy. And I think that that still is true for a lot of players. And I think players who sign into Ohio State kind of go into it understanding that. I, again, I said that on Tuesday. But I also think that there's just certain guys like Jeremiah Smith who are so good that and, and as we're having this conversation about like the black stripes the, the black stripe situation I think because you're constantly playing this battle of like okay how good is this guy where does he fit how are we going to utilize him um and just trying to make sure you're keeping people happy I think that he's going to have a bigger role than maybe I initially thought that doesn't mean I think he's going to be like wide receiver one um, this, this team has too many good wide receivers to just let him be like maybe top of the depth chart. But I do think like, we're going to see him in a good amount of games this year. And he's going to probably like, it's not just going to be, he comes in when they're blowing out. Uh, I don't know, Indiana by like 40, it's going to be like, okay, he's part of the offense and he gets worked in and, and he's taking, he's taking a rep. And, and, and I don't know if that means he gets redshirted this year, because I think he's going to end up probably playing in more games than, um, than the six. You know what I think I'm going to need here? Because this is awfully Anthony Lima of you. All right. With respect and love. All right. I consider myself a friend of yours. Why can't we just change? Why yours. can't why can't our nope. minds nope. change? No, nope. no, no. 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 Because nothing should have changed your mind. That's the damn point. Nothing, there's nothing that happened should have changed your mind. But I'm going to say right now, I think you should put out your yardage projections and touchdown projections for Jeremiah Smith so that we have a baseline to go back to in the future. So how many yards? Let's give that freshman prediction. You said he's, he's going to be playing in key games, so he won't be wide receiver one. Give me the yardage number and touchdown numbers. Just so we can, again, just so we can keep you in check because you clearly cannot be trusted with Jeremiah Smith. Give me the numbers and touchdowns. <laughs> uh, okay, so just to compare, I looked up Carnell Tate's numbers from last year. He had... 18 receptions for 264 yards and a touchdown. I will say that Jeremiah Smith finishes with 350 yards mm -hmm. and two touchdowns. Now, is this like a price is right situation? You can't go over 
but it's like closest to the pin wins. Uh, yeah, I think that's fine. All right, All right and, and for what it's I'm, worth, Car- Cardinal Tate appeared in 13 games last year. All right, so what were your numbers that you said? 350 yards and what? 350 yards and two touchdowns. All right, I'm gonna go 351 yards and three touchdowns. <laughs> I'm one dollar <laughs> bobbing you just to keep you honest. But how, right. does that, how does that help you, though? You, like, you can't no, win in this no, situation because no, if, if he goes over that, then he goes over. Well, no, if he goes over, I win. So if he no, has – you said we can't – you said no, no, you no, said no. that you can't go over. No, price is oh. spread rules. You got to understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can't you. You predict more than he has. What? I said price is right rules. You said, if you, go over, you said if you go over, then, he, then you're wrong. You only went over by a dollar. So no, means the, he has the, to... point, the point, yes, if you go over, you're wrong. Meaning if right. he has 400 yards and you say 401 yards, you're wrong. Boom, you lose. <laughs> Everybody knows. You, listen, you can challenge me on a lot of shit. You call me out on my price is right rule explanations and you and I will meet in Temecula, sir. So right, 151 I, yards and three touchdowns, 350 no, 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 yards, no. two touchdowns. But, but okay, am I wrong that in price is right? If you go over though, it goes to the person who was like next closest. That was the that was below the number, right? Yes, but that was exactly how I explained it. Right. Which is, so your, I'm your saying projection. If, I'm saying over. I thought that you were. I thought you want to go a dollar below me because then no, that wouldn't work. Yes, it would because then you would end up. That's only not how like, one dollar Bob oh works. <laughs> Have you never seen it? Oh, because wait, wait, because you think okay, I see what you're saying. You think he's gonna go over 350 yards anyway. So yes. I, okay, I got you. Yes. And I think you're a chicken shit by pedging your bets on 350 yards. So I'm gonna put 351 so there's no wiggle room. He's either at 350 <laughs> or you lose and I win. Or we both so how many yards do you so lose? What do you what how many yards do you think he's going to be? 351 yards no, 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 and no, no. three touchdowns. Realistically, like how do you think he's gonna be like 400? Like you think he's gonna be closer to four? Unlike you, I set a prediction and I fucking stick with that prediction. All right. I, I am not a slippery wizard. I am oak, <laughs> I'm an oak. All right. I am strong and sturdy like an oat. I am an oak, not an oat. An oat is not strong or sturdy. An oak. That's where I'm at. Uh, drop your Jeremiah Smith projections on the 92.3 The Fan YouTube channel. Now that I'm done berating poor Spencer, you deserve better. I'm just very feisty. Uh, when we come back, uh, we'll get into the quarterback hype. I think I now know what's going on there. And the maybe nightmare scenario for Ohio State. That's next right here on Sons of the Shoe. But first, a quick word from our sponsors. So as we move from the Jeremiah Smith hype to the quarterback hype, I think I realize what's going on in Columbus because um, I have now seen one Devin Brown's presser earlier this week got an insane amount of love for for what a what a guy he is. You know, obviously he's he's talked multiple times about how he's here to compete. He's not going anywhere. We'll see on March fifteenth whether or sorry we'll see on April fifteenth whether that's real or not because the, the portal will open up for a second time there. But and listen, I'm not anti-Devin Brown. I'm anti-media creations. And I've heard enough about his press conferences. I've heard enough about his arm strength, which everyone that watched him at practice says, he's got the best arm. And I will say, I did not see that in any of the times that he threw the ball this year or – uh, like in like that game where he played pretty much the full game. I did not see this alleged arm strength, but I'm willing to say this is a media creation. I officially have moved to the Columbus media. The blue, uh, the 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 Buckeyes uh, media is trying too hard to make this a thing. I do not think it's a thing. I think this is a media creation, and I think they're trying too hard to sell Devin Brown as the great white hope. I think that's probably fair. Um, I, I'll tell you what I think is is kind of going on is I, I think that it's all I, th- and I don't know like if the media is purposely doing this, but I think that Ohio state is almost doing Devin Brown a solid where they're like, Hey, we're going to say it's a quarterback competition and let you try to earn it. And if you don't, we're going to talk you up so much and make sure the media talks you up so much that if you want to transfer 
there will be an opportunity for you to uh, go somewhere and some team will feel like they have a really good quarterback coming in because, well, at Ohio State, he was doing some really good things this spring. That's kind of what it feels like is happening. Like they're 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 doing their best Devin Brown sales pitch. Um, and that and, and that goes back to what I said, you know, earlier in the offseason, I want to say back in like February during combine week or whatever it was when when I was solo. Um, that I, you know, I, I think it's great that Devin Brown's saying all the right things right now and that he's talking about this competition and he's open to it and he's not just going to run and hide because he, he doesn't get handed the job, um, which I also think was kind of, in some ways, I almost think it was almost a shot at Kyle McCord too. Like, yeah, you know, I'm not chicken shit. I'm, I'm sticking around and I'm going to actually try to duke this thing out because that's just who I am. Um, but I, 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 I commend him for that. But I also said in that other, in that episode, like, if he were to decide at any point after spring, after next season, uh, whatever, that he was going to transfer because he wanted a chance to start somewhere, I also wouldn't blame him for that. So, you know, credit to him for sticking it out, but I don't necessarily think it's – it's if he does transfer, it doesn't make him like any lesser of a Buckeye or person or whatever. Like, this is a log jam quarterback room, and um, we'll see. I also think it's interesting how the, the transfer portal coming up on April 15th, once that opens after the spring game, it is going to be interesting to see if, again, there's a lot of scuttlebutt that uh, there's going to be a lot of maybe moves happening and some surprise things happening. And if that's and just, the case, just to be clear, that's not necessarily just for Ohio State, right? Um, right. That is that is like a countrywide thing, and it right. has kind of been tipped off by Caden Proctor, who you and I salivated over for a month in the transfer portal, yeah. who went from Alabama to Iowa only to take a hundred thousand dollars in cash and then go right back to Iowa, yeah, right, yeah. right back to Alabama. So, Which I know what we're going to get into in a second, but um, but I was just going to say if. And I don't know if this is going to happen, but maybe the log jam at quarterback starts to sort itself out at Ohio State during that period. Like if Julian Sands, like, yeah, you know, I, it was fun to compete, but I, you know, I, I, if, if he gets the sense that maybe he's not going to be the starter even next year because they really like Aaron Nolan or something, maybe he decides to transfer. So I don't know. We'll see how this all sorts itself out, but I wouldn't be surprised if this just becomes almost like a, hey, let's let's give Devin Brown some good PR so that if if he decides to transfer, he can he can land somewhere else and be a starter. Now, we should get into the Caden Proctor thing because it has tentacles that do reach to Ohio State. Listen, there's a part of me that thinks it's very funny that there is no legal obligation for this kid to to pay back the money. And the idea that and like I, I understand why people are frustrated and I don't think it's great. I think it's I think it's unethical if Caden Proctor went to Iowa without a full without really wanting to go to Iowa. If he just went to take the money and go back to Alabama, it is it is unethical at best and it is just they it like it should be illegal. That's it's not right. Is what is the best way to put it. Um without knowing the full details, it is funny. Um because we've how many times have we seen administrators, faculty, football play or football coaches like the whole machine is rigged for their financial benefit. Even the buyout system where the, the, the school you're going to is going to pay out your buyout. So it's basically just money laundering. If this becomes widespread and we're going to find out in the portal coming up on the 15th, uh, fair, fair point here. If this becomes widespread, it's, it, it is going to, and this would be my word of caution to college football players. If you abuse this system, some people feel you're abusing the system just by going into the portal every single year. But if you abuse this system by taking money and then leaving before you ever play for a, a down for that school, you will absolutely hasten change in college football or college basketball, and it will be to the detriment of student athletes. Yeah, that's fair. Like, here's the thing: college college administrators don't need too many Caden Proctors to come down and, and reinstitute the era of tyranny that they had for the first 120 years or what well, with the NCAA was really like a 75 year thing. They do not need any more examples. So I would just say, to, I, and I, and here's the thing, it's always going to be the bad faith actors in this scenario with players because coaches, administrators, they're just looking for this crap under a rock. 
So it, the insula, isolated incident, uh, incident I, I'm willing to chalk it up to it's unethical, but on some level it's it's slightly comical. Um, I would just really advise players against doing stuff like this because this is the kind of stuff that is going to get everybody united and it will not be it will not end up for with more freedom for players. It'll end up more close to the the you know uh, indentured servitude that you had previously. You're 100 percent right. Um, I do think there's a comical side of this um, because and let's face it, like I'm never I'm never gonna sit here and like, you know, do the woe is me for these billionaires and millionaires who are do- often donating to these collectives and you know, trying to help fund these programs. Um, but I do think about it from a standpoint of like Ohio state and yeah, it, it's as a fan, like it is somewhat frustrating for a kid to like, come just take the money that you could have used on somebody else who actually would come here, come and want to play here. Um, because you know, some kids just taking it and running and this kind of already has been hinted at potentially happening to Ohio state with the Quinn Ewers situation. People said he basically did the same thing, came, signed his contract for NIL, took the money, went back to Texas um, he, so he at least like he stayed stuck it out for on the year, campus yeah. and stuck it out yeah. for the year. That's like, true. That's, that's true. This is this is not great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and so I I think on some level, like I'm not going to cry or spill milk, and there is like a co- comedic value to it. Although I do think with these collectives, you have seen some people who have given to these who aren't like your one percenters at a university. Like there are people who are just like fans of the team who. They make a decent living and they're like, hey, you know what? I, I want to help fund the program. So here's like a thousand dollars. So I, I I do think there's the, the trickle down effect of that is like people all around who are donating these collectives and helping fund these things do feel like on some level they're robbed. And I do think to your point, it's just going to speed up the process. Like nobody likes feeling like their money was just absolutely stolen from them and that it wasn't used in good faith. So that that's going to speed up the process of them trying to regulate this. And yeah, you're right. It's going to be at a detriment to the players. I'll also say, I almost think this is where the current setup of the NIL within the NCA rules is basically it's, it is, it is coming back to bite right now, the universities and the collectives themselves, because, because you're not allowed to do like the pay for play. Like, it's not like, okay, if you start this many games, you get X amount of money. Or if it's, you know, if you stick it out, there, like, or it's it's not like set up like the NFL where a guy signs a contract and he gets, the money hits his paycheck. Now there's a signing bonus figure that he gets when he signs, but because he's under contract, like the base salary payments come as they play a game, right? Like they get those each Tuesday of the week that follows or whatever the hell it is. So it's it's not set up that way. If you were allowed to do it that way, if you were allowed to do like a pay for play type thing where it was like, okay, you know, you, you play 10 games, you see the full amount of this contract or this, or this deal that we're this NIL deal we're giving you, then it actually happens. Now that also is a detriment to the players because they might not see that many games, but you know, that, that that's well, so where I think, real quick. I think instead of per game, I think what you do is uh, it's like every two weeks if you're enrolled, it's like an, it's like a normal job, yeah. meaning, all right, you are still going to practice. You're still doing all this stuff. Here's your every two week pay. Like, I mean, I think, I think it's a good way to do it. Okay. Here's a signing bonus. Here's your weekly allotment. Here's your, this, but I think the problem is even in this system, like I, I, I think we're putting it all on Caden Proctor. How do we know some, you know, Southern dandy, didn't like go up to to Caden and and give him the Godfather offer. Like, I, granted, we are putting on all oh, the player unethical on this on that. How do we know the second this kid didn't land in Iowa that there are guys from uh, Alabama in his DMs and, and chasing him financially, saying, "Hey, man, I'll give you five million dollars to come back to Alabama. Or I'll give you a million dollars to come back to Alabama." I think that's the other part of this that like it's again, it's pushing towards like, you got to get these guys under contract. I don't think that ends up being good for players either. But again, I think that's going to, yeah. I think that's where teams are going to want to go simply because that's going to be an avenue to, to control the flow of funds. And hopefully uh, now all of a sudden it's going to be the Caden Proctor thing, but you know, uh, we don't want a Caden Proctor here. This will be the, but just, uh, just as you were talking about, I was thinking about how like, we don't know what calls Caden was getting during all this. And I think that's what ends up making me uncomfortable with, with 
what this is going to be used as is some sort of clarion call to these, you know, the, these hyperbolic, um, you know, monsters of chaos who all they really want is their control back. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and we've talked about that a lot. Like just the control factor is the big element here. It's why Nick Saban says I'm out. I, I don't want to be part of this because he's losing control. The schools are losing control with the NIL stuff and, and all that, all that matters. Um, I, it, it's, and, and I want to be clear, like, I don't think either of us have like all the answers to this, like, because on some level, on some level, you, you're right. Like there probably is going to be some sort of regulation, whether it's what you propose, where it's like a weekly thing or two weeks, every two weeks, like, okay, here's your next payment, whatever, as long as you're enrolled. Um, and that doesn't help the players because you want them to maximize the amount of money they can get. Um, and neither does the four, neither does like the pay per play pay, pay by game type scenario. Cause then again, you might not see some of that money. So that doesn't help them. Um, but there does, I, I do think on some level, like there has to be a happy medium because these collectives and things aren't just going to, to let people get away with this. I, I do think Caden Proctor is, is going to end up being the example though, to your point. Like it's going to, this is now going to be the inflection point where if other people do this, it's going to be, well, he pulled a Caden Proctor and that that's just what it's going to be unless he gives the money back, which I'm doubt he's going to do. Um, and then it would be, you know, okay. Just in good faith. But yeah, I, 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 I wondered as well, like you did what this means for that very fa fast paced changing landscape of the NIL era and how these programs do business. Now, I think what's also interesting about this, I know this is where we kind of wanted to go next, was that another Alabama transfer that, that came to Ohio State is, is Caleb, and Caleb Downs has also been rumored all throughout the week uh, to potentially be pulling a Caden Proctor and also going back to Alabama at some point here in the spring. Well, um, let's, let's be honest. The rumor started because he removed Ohio State football from his social media handle. Yeah. So it, it is the, oh, oh is it, 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 we're basically profile watching again, and we haven't even made it to uh, December again. So I guess this is just what we're going to be doing in college uh, athletics. I, I want to hold that for now the next does, segment because okay. it ties into the Michigan panic meter. And I also have to answer your charge last week on the Michigan panic meter. But first, a quick word from our sponsors. All right, guys, we're going to get into the Caleb Downs fear that exists in Columbus. But uh, last week, uh, or sorry, last episode, uh, because Tony Alford uh, went to Michigan, you used that as justification to uh, to go ahead and move your Michigan panic meter. Am I, am I correct? Have I misquoted you? I moved out of the dark gray and just into the light gray a little bit, yeah. I, 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 listen, I needed... And I said I actually said this a couple weeks ago because let's be honest, Nick. Every week it was basically just us coming on here and telling people, well, the we're not going to do the Michigan panic meter because it's just the same. Nobody's worried about Michigan, so we needed something to interject some life into the Michigan panic meter segment. And so I have now moved into the light gray, and I think the spring game will be a perfect opportunity to see if my panic changes at all. If I go back into the the dark gray and I feel good about it. And then it could change again if uh, the Monday after, when the when the transfer portal reopens back up, um, there's a lot of people who are transferring out of Ohio State, or if Caleb Downs really leaves, or something like that. So there's uh, there's opportunity aplenty to breathe you're some life into the Michigan panic meter segment. You're addicted to the struggle. You're addicted to panic, and I get it. I'm not. It's, listen to each their own. We all have our own special journeys on this planet. Um, <laughs> a running backs coach. Who left? And I, I think, like, when you see the details of the contract, um, apparently he got like a seventy-five thousand dollar raise, which is nice. But let's be honest with you, like, that's seventy-five thousand dollar raise to go to the arch rival. And then he, I don't know if you saw, but he put out like, put out like a cryptic tweet about how uh, they only hate you when you leave because you were so good. And it's like, no, Jack, they hate you because you went to the arch rival. And yeah. You could have gone. You could have gone back to Notre Dame. Nobody would have hated you. You could have gone to Cincinnati. Could have gone to be a head coach. Could have gone literally Michigan State, uh, Indiana, Purdue, Penn State, uh, Oregon. You could go to any Big Ten school, and they wouldn't hate you. Would be like, ah, damn, I hate to lose that guy. You went to Michigan. Stop playing it. So defiantly, I am keeping my Michigan panic meter 
at zero panic. <laughs> all right. To show you the way of your, your, your slippery ways and everything. I am, I'm defiantly um, just not moving my Michigan panic meter. Now, interesting rumor that the one message board rumor that I saw was that Oklahoma's DeMarco Murray came very, very close to accepting the Ohio state job. He had interviewed for the job, but then he was offered an offer he could not refuse. And then the other is that Stan Drayton is very interested in leaving Temple as the head coach to uh, to come to Columbus to be the running backs coach, which obviously he was from 2012 to 2014. Yeah. So uh, that, those that, are just kind of the latest on the rumor mill on that. Well, that one's fascinating because of what we talked about last week with, with Chip Kelly, right? Like coach, head coach at another program, leaving to take a lesser role. Now for Chip Kelly – He's he's gets to do what he's always wanted to do anyway, which is like I'm just focusing on the offense and running the offense, and I get to coach. Um, but for for Drayton, it would be sort of a, a multiple levels of like a less a, a step down as he would just go be the running backs coach, and maybe that's what he wants. But I just find that fascinating. It's it's another example of like, okay, there's these top tier programs that can just offer you a better opportunity in terms of like reinventing yourself. In, in the same way Nick Saban did with all these all OCs over the years um, to maybe then find another job somewhere else. If you're not, if you're unhappy with your current situation. So Ohio state almost feels like it's becoming like a rehabilitation, a, co- a coach rehabilitation center for, for some people who want to like maybe improve their image or get a, get a, find a job down the line that, that they sort of save themselves or fix themselves at Ohio state in the meantime. I mean, Drayton is six and eighteen in two years at uh, Temple, and he's two and fourteen in the American Athletic Conference. So it could also be much like Chip Kelly. Hey, I don't really have a chance here at Temple, so I yeah. might as well go back, regroup, maybe reboot my career, and see if yeah, a couple of years what, down the road. That's kind like, of that's for what a guy I was, like that, that. Yeah, that's what I was implying though. It's like it's kind of like a, a rehabilitation stop for a coach. I don't mean that as like a for 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 Steve Sarkeesian, for example, Alabama really literally. was like a rehab center literally, for him. But I'm rehab, saying, yeah. like, from just like an image of a coach, it's a chance to kind of be like clean slate. It, it's it's almost uh, compared to uh, like Mitch Trubisky, for example. Mitch Trubisky got drafted by Chicago, didn't pan out. He goes to Buffalo, backs up Josh Allen, and all of a sudden, what, what did you hear the next year? Oh, Mitch Trubisky, I don't know. Like, he was learning from Josh Allen for a year. There might be something there. He just needs a better system. And then he goes to Pittsburgh, and we all realized he was the same guy he was in Chicago. So it's like a chance to almost, like, wipe your slate clean and almost rebrand yourself, and I think that's that's appealing to certain coaches, especially like like uh, Stan Drayton, who, like you said, hasn't had a very good time at Temple and doesn't have the resources. He goes to Ohio State and kind of re, uh, reinvents himself. Some of us thought Mitchell Trubisky sucked the whole time, but that's just this fo- fella. Um, so we did. We were talking about the Caden hey, be Crocker careful. Thing. They might uh, be waiting for you in the Halley Building. Like that. I know, I I saw the Trubiskys. <laughs> I uh, and here's the thing: I wasn't intimidated, but I was like, if I have to fight multiple Trubiskys, I'm just gonna have to do it. All right, I've got the <laughs> I I've got the size advantage. I got the weight advantage. I got the reach advantage. I just if I have to do it, uh, uh, you know, I'll defend myself. Is what I'm saying. But we were talking about the Caden Proctor thing, and there is considerable panic in Columbus that Caleb Downs could follow suit because Caleb is unfollowed – or sorry, he's taken Ohio State out of his his handle. Um, I will say Caleb Downs is a significant enough player. If Caleb decided to go back to Alabama – or if he went to the portal again and just took the money and run, a la the optics of what it looks like uh, Caden Proctor did, Caleb Downs leaving Ohio State should be one of the things that changes how we feel about this season. Maybe not the Michigan panic meter, but Caleb is the kind of guy who can take that defense from, all right, they're a top 10 defense to being a truly the best defense in the nation, and he's the kind of guy that could take over multiple playoff games. That's really his reputation as a safety. I agree. I I think it would alter my panic meter a little bit more just because – you lose a guy like that. I mean, he he's that type of impactful uh, talent on this roster. Uh, I will say, I, I I don't know. Like, you never know what to make of the, well, he unfollowed this and followed that. Now, I will say somebody pulled up that he still follows Tim um, Tim Allen, who's the, um, or Tim Walton, excuse me. I don't know why I said Tim Allen. Like, this is oh, a oh, home, oh, oh. home improvement. Um, no, he, he still follows Tim Walton who's the, the Buckeyes DB coach. 
And so I, like for whatever that means, like obviously he's the one who's probably uh, had a big role in recruiting him and bringing him to Ohio State. And they've spoken very highly of Tim Walton. So that that means something. I know he was at he was at Ohio State's pro day the other day. I saw there was a picture of him chalking it up with uh, CJ Stroud. So there was like talk that he was on some like a bunch of these Alabama guys went on like the same, same spring break trip or something like that. And that's part of what lured Proctor back. And I don't know, like maybe that means that downs goes back. I don't know. Um, But I would think like, it's not like Caleb downs is coming to Ohio state and they're like, Hey, you really got to earn your stripes here. Like they, they know what he is. They know how good he is. He's going to start from day one. He has a great chance to win a national championship. And I, I, I don't see there. Oh, there was also, I saw, the group, the collective that I think is working that 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 has that has money involved with Caleb Downs, they tweeted something out the other day that was that along the lines of like, "Hey, Caleb's one hundred percent here. You know, we're happy to have him along for the ride." And and he he we ju- you know he just told us he's he's all in or something. So uh, again, that that could be fodder. That could just be them like going off of what they they've been told, and that doesn't mean other people aren't showing up or DMing. Caleb Downs and to like what you said with Proctor and being like, Hey, we can offer you more than the Ohio state collective. Come on back. Um, so I'm not saying that that's impossible, but um, like, it sounds like at least from the indications are now and the, the trench report window doesn't officially open until April 15th. It sounds like he's, he's here. And I don't know that that's going to necessarily change now. Maybe it does. I, I don't know if, if we get to that point, obviously we can assess what our panic level is, but um, yours I, will be I, high. I'm kind of subscribing to the idea that I – well, as, as much as I like to panic, Nick, like I'm really not all that worried about him leaving. I, Until I just he think, leaves. I, well, yeah, then if he leaves, I'll be completely – I'll be a wreck. But, um, yeah, I, I just so, – I don't know. It, it doesn't seem like he's going to from the sense that I get and just from people who said like, yeah, I mean, he's engaged in the program. He's there. He's around. He seems happy. Now, again, we never know because sometimes – cryptic social media actions can speak to deeper uh, intentions of somebody. And so maybe that's what's happening here, but I just, I, I don't, I try not to read too much into that stuff all the time. Sometimes it means nothing. Sometimes it means something. I I'm not like if we're, if we're talking on the scale of like a panic meter, I'm at like a zero right now in terms of him leaving. I think he's going to stay. So I just think there's a big difference between what Iowa can pay somebody in Alabama can. I don't it's know. True. There's a significant difference between what Ohio state can pay and what Alabama can pay. And so I, I think, uh, you know, I am, am I, I don't intrigues the wrong word. It's it's funny. But... It's funny, Nick, that you say that too, because what were we talking about like a year ago? I mean, not on this podcast, because this didn't exist. A year I was going to say, I don't remember what I talked about a month ago, let alone <laughs> a year ago. <laughs> well, neither do I. That's why I forgot what I said about uh, Jeremiah Smith. Anyway, I, I will uh... <laughs> not forget 351 <laughs> yards and three touchdowns. I $1 Bob the shit out of you. <laughs> um. But uh, it's funny, like a year ago this time, we probably would have been saying, I don't know, like Ohio State doesn't seem like they're really taking the the collective stuff seriously. And they keep saying they don't have a lot of money to offer. So it's just funny that in a year's time, that's completely changed. Where now we're like, yeah, Ohio State money is up there with Bama money and Georgia money. And in, in, in Iowa money is, is much, much lesser. So it's just funny how far we've come, even within a year of this new era that Ohio State's now like a top dog and they're actually taking it seriously. Um, I I am intrigued. I'm interested in this situation. I am not concerned as of yet. And a lot of it is just maybe a little Ohio State hubris going on here. Now, you mentioned sure. the, the Alabama guys, even former Alabama guys going on the same trip. Does that not scream a little bit like – I'm not trying to say Epstein Island, okay? But doesn't doesn't it scream like a little bit? <laughs> Please of like, don't. Again, we, we, that is I imagine there's just like a was. Southern dandy textile, you know, mercantile man that's just like, Mr. Caden Proctor, can I invite you to my private I'm island? I'm picturing a scene from Django Unchained right now, like Leonardo, oh. like Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> How did you go to the worst place? I just went to like well, the a way place – uh, an island of ill repute. You went to Django. No, that was not the kind of weekend. That's not going to get Caden Proctor back to Alabama. <laughs> well, the uh, Alabama governor is uh, getting rid of DEI stuff at uh, public schools. So I don't know. 
I, I, now you're going political. This is weird. The, I was just trying to make a funny thing that it's like they went to like they traveled first class. You started talking like Colonel Sanders. It was like, ah, no, I don't know what the vibes from getting here. Yeah. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Because he's a Southern, because he's a Southern dandy and a mercantile man. Because he's a, now I sound like Benoit Blanc from Glass Onion uh, or from Knives Out. <laughs> no, my point is. My point is that he he gets all these former Alabama players on a jet to like Fiji and there's countless beautiful women and there's stacks of money. And he's like, you know, now does this happen in Iowa? And then the answer is no. So like, I'm trying to paint a picture of a, of a, of a, of, of an Alabama booster, like coercing these kids with money and sex back to Alabama. And you turned it into a very, very dirty and tawdry. Okay, thing well, there. this conversation started with you calling it Epstein Island, so I think well, that's I even that's even darker. That is way I, darker than where I okay, went. Okay, Epstein Island without the sex trafficking. The <laughs> girls want to be there. Okay, uh, yeah. Like, okay. That, no, yeah. I mean, it's just it's a nice place to party. Like, I just, come on, you're you're you sully this whole thing. I started this off on a real sure footing, and then you with that Django reference, you really you really stepped in it there, Spencer. Sure, I, I stepped in. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad we agree. Uh, all right, guys, leave your uh, leave your messages on 92.3 The Fans or leave your comments on 92.3 The Fans YouTube channel or at Nick Wilson says at Spencito underscore. Uh, do you have any panic that Caleb Downs could be heading back to Alabama or leaving Ohio State? He did unfollow – or sorry, he did take Ohio State – football out of his um profiles on social media are you panicking uh of course next week we'll have the latest from uh practice practice rolls on we're marching ever closer to the spring game uh so make sure to be following sons of the shoe wherever you get your podcast so you have the latest don't miss the latest on this and we're talking apple spotify i said that weird apple spotify uh the free odyssey app 92 through the fan.com uh, uh, Apple, that's a great place to, to follow us, but, uh, follow sense of the shoe, wherever you get it. And, uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you guys next week. Spencer, you were a little slippery today. You went a little Anthony Lima, but I'm proud of you. I think we've rehabbed you. And I think this lesson that I've taught you on the $1 bobbing on Jeremiah Smith's numbers, it's going to be for your own good. Not when he hits 350 yards on the dot. Just wait. Yeah. Yeah. And then I will, I will appeal the the statistician in the mission game to be like i think that was an extra yard there i have unknown power spencer <laughs> uh spencer good stuff buddy thanks nick you too go bucks